Hello and welcome to this tutorial on drawing and using masks in After Effects. The aim of this tutorial is to show you how to properly and quickly draw masks in After Effects and how to use the keyboard shortcuts to move things around and move things properly, but also how to then take your masks and use them on multiple layers. What do I mean? Well I kindly got a request from a gentleman who'd moved from Final Cut Pro to the Creative Suite and was asking how he could do masking in a very similar way to how he'd been working in Final Cut Pro. For example, let's just say this vase of tulips over here. He wanted something different in this area, and something different in this area, and something different in this area, whatever the image may have been. He wanted to be able to mask it so that he could add something in each of the different mask areas. How could he do that quickly and simply in After Effects? And I'm going to show you how in this tutorial. Now, looking at this footage, you can see that occasionally you get given footage which is absolutely horrendous but you still have to use it because it's the only good take and it's needed for the production. And what somebody said to me was, could you take this and could you at least get rid of the background and put a different background behind it? And we're only going to use a few seconds, but we still need to see this gentleman's face. So I'm using this footage because I'm planning to show in a future tutorial how you can rotoscope this image using Mocha for AE. But for now, we're just going to look at this vase and see what we can manage. Now the first thing we need to do is zoom into the area we want, so I'm just going to scroll forward with my mouse and hold the space bar and pull it across until we can start to see the area that we're starting to work on. So we're going to work on these tulips just here, and I'm going to just start with the top of the tulips. Actually move it down a bit so we can see it better, there you go. So I'm going to actually be doing this bit over here, and actually just for this tutorial I'll just do this bit because you don't want to see a man drawing for hours and hours, it could be boring. But the other thing I want to show you is a preference that's going to help us when we draw lots of different masks. So on a Mac you need to go to your After Effects menu and Preferences, on a PC it's Edit Preferences and we're going to go down to Appearance. And under Appearance you have a little checkbox here that says Cycle Mask Colors. Make sure you have Cycle Mask Colors selected. The reason being that every time you create a new mask, a different colour is assigned to it. If you don't do this, all your masks will be yellow, and you won't know one from another very easily. Whereas if there are lots of different colours, it's much easier to pick masks out. So make sure that you have Cycle Mask Colours, and then you can click OK. And then we're ready to start drawing. So you select the pen tool, and then the way we want to be able to do this, I'm going to actually start at this point here and work around, is click and drag. Okay, so click and drag. Don't just click, click and drag. So at this point here, I'm going to click and drag, and you'll see that Bezier handles have been created. And I'm actually going to zoom in a little so that we can see this a little bit more closely. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hover near the end of my Bezier handle. And as you see, it changes to the Convert Vertex tool. But what that allows me to do is break the handle. So I can grab it and I start to move the handle in the direction that I wish my mask to go in. And this is quite important. For a good mask, you want to be able to take this handle and go in the direction that you want your mask to continue in. So I want my mask to continue from here. And when I've gone all the way around, I want it to come in from here. So I'm continuing this way so I can go to the top of this leaf, click and drag. Now I can take this handle, just get that Convert Vertex tool and just move it so it's about the right place. The further you pull it, the more it will round out from that end. So you can actually change where a curve is. So if I move this one and then I ask to get this Vertex tool, I can pull the curve up and down the line by the length of these handles, as you can see. So obviously I don't want it this long, I just want it to follow the, the line of the leaf. So about there. And this point up here, I want to pull round to where I next want to go. So I want to go to about here, click and drag, and then I can pull these points till I get about the right look, and then I hold the space bar to pull everything up, and then I can take this Convert Vertex tool and again pull this up the direction I intend to go, and I'm going to go to about here because this curves in and then round, so about there, click and drag, and again pull it in and pull that to the right place, now click and drag here pulling the way I want to go and then I can take this point and just pull it in 
and have a good line. Now, this point is now in the wrong place, but if I hover over it, you see I get the pen minus or get rid of the point, which isn't what I want to do. But if I hold the control key on a PC, the Apple key on a Mac, I get my pointer tool and I can actually shift that point around, let go, go back to my convert vertex tool. So by holding the control key on the PC, the Apple key on a Mac, you can actually get hold of these points and physically shift them around. And then we can go back to this point here, click on it, holding the control key again, and we're at the right place. So now hold the space bar and pull it up. And then we're going to start working around our flowers. And let's see if I can take one right at the top. Now this may not work, but this is an important point. The further apart you can have your points, the smoother the line will generally be. So if I take one here and, and click and drag, I can click and drag quite a long way. If I go off the screen, you can see the screen will scroll. And now I can take this point down here and I can pull it. And then with a bit of push-pull, is it possible to get close to what I want? I don't think it's going to quite be, but it's quite close. So I need to move this point. Again, hold the control key, take the point to the right place, go back to the convert vertex key, and get it to about the right look. And you can carry on working until it, it, it sorts itself out. Again, I'm probably going to take that one to there in actual fact. And there we go. So you can then work your way around the tulips or around the item that you're working on. You can see that that one's in all the wrong places, so you can just click and drag. This point's too long. You need to pull it down. So you actually need to work with the points until you get the right look and the right feel for what you're trying to do. Again, you can see this one's way out. Pull these handles out here. A bit difficult to see because the, the mask is the same colour as actually the, the tulips are. And you can work your way around. Now, I'm just going to very quickly work my way around now. Now, for some reason, I've accidentally finished my mask and gone on to a new mask, and I don't want that to happen. So at this stage, I'm going to do Control Z. I'm going to go back to my last point, and if I click my Control key, I've got my handles again. And if I click and drag, I've now drawn on from that mask and carried on from where I left off. Okay, so that's how you can actually do that. So the key tools that I'm using are the click and drag and then let go of the mouse, go back to the Convert Vertex tool and move the handles around and then the control or the command key to actually physically move the point to the right place if it hasn't quite gone to the place you intended it to go to. And then you can fiddle around and get these points in exactly the right place. I shall now fast forward until this is completed. And towards the end here, we're now actually getting to the point where we're just going to go straight across. I'm actually going to pull this one straight down because that's where the, the vase is going. So I can click. At this point we can click, click. And then when we get the little circle, we've finished. And I just need to pull that handle in. And there we go. We've created the mask. The mask around the area that we want to work on. Now, what you can do now, obviously, is you can go to the mask and you can open up the layer. If you hit MM, it opens up your paths for you, your masks. So if you've got lots of masks, they'll all open up. And what you can do is you can add a little bit of feather on there. So perhaps we we'll probably only want, say, two pixels at the most, just to give us a slight soft edge. And zoom in, you can see you've got a slightly soft edge, which will probably work in this particular instance. So we've created our first mask. Now what we want to do is mask out these little areas down here. However, what is very wise to do at this point is to select your mask, hit return on your keyboard, and name it. So I'm just going to call this one the vase and hit return. So now that when I look at my mask, I can identify quickly what they are. However, these ones inside are going to be difficult to identify, but I'll show you how to select those a bit later on. So what I'm going to do now is very quickly draw a few masks in here. I'll show you the first one and then I'll skip and just move forward till they're all done so that you don't have to watch me drawing for ages and ages. Right, so my layer selected, but not my mask. So now I can draw in here, click and drag, Click and drag. Of course, I could zoom in more if I wanted to. I'm only going to do these very roughly. Again, I'm going to take this vertex tool and pull it down here because that's actually where I'm going next, just to there. But I need to move that point across slightly. Click and drag on the point if I haven't got handles, which I hadn't. And then go up to the top, click and drag if I want to get handles. Oops. Control Z if you make a mistake. 
Okay, so what I've done is I've created a second mask, but it's not got rid of it, which is what we would expect. We'd expect it to get rid of it. So if we look at the masks here, you'll see the first one says add. And if we look at the second mask, you'll see that that also says add. What I can do is now change that to subtract and it cuts it out. And if I want to, I can open that and I could say put a one pixel feather on there if I wanted to, because we're actually very zoomed in at this point. And so I can draw my next one. So make sure the layer is selected and I'm going to go through these and come back to you when they're all done. Okay, so I'm on the last mask here, it's very rough, but um, say I want to get hold of this point again, and if I go over it, I've got the, the minus pen tool, which will get rid of the point, but if I hold the control key on a PC, the command key on a Mac, click on it, I've got it, I've also got my handles back, and I can finesse it. And again, I'm gonna go down to this last one, and I'm gonna take that also to subtract, and then I'm gonna open up the layer, and I'm gonna just add one pixel of feather on that. Great, now I'm gonna go back to my arrow tool, and I'm going to zoom out slightly and we've got our item made and we've got all our masks created and actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize all those masks okay so now what I want to do is fill each one of these areas with a different color how do I go about doing that or a different item or a different image first thing you need to do is create whatever it is you need to fill the image I'm just going to use solid layer so I'm going to go layer new solid or command or control Y is the shortcut and we'll make this one bright red and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to put it below my layer and this is the trick let's just click on any of these masks click on it that's the one I want to fill with red and notice that it is selected in the timeline all I need to do now is make sure it's selected and do control or command C or edit copy select the red layer and go control or command V or edit paste and it does exactly what we don't want to do it's the opposite of what we planned however if we hit M we reveal our mask see it's in subtract mode take it from subtract to add now that area is filled with red okay so let's say we want this one in yellow again the same thing layer new solid and we'll make this one yellow nice bright yellow click OK take it to the bottom of my timeline select the layer and then select the mask if I want my mask is highlighted in the timeline mask 3 select it control or command C for copying go down to my yellow control or command of V to paste hit M on the yellow and then go from subtract to add and now what you see is we've got red and yellow and we can do the same again I'll do it a couple more times layer new solid we'll make this one blue okay take it below the other layers again select the top layer with the masks on this is the mask so select that one we can see it's mask 2 so make sure it's selected, copy it, go to blue, paste, and then hit M for mask, go from subtract to add. And then finally we've got this little one over here which we can make green, can't we? So layer new solid. And drop that at the bottom. Select the top layer, make sure you select the mask, you can see which mask it is, copy it, paste it, M to reveal it, subtract to add and it's all done. Now if you had animated these masks by animating the mask path, you can see it's mask path and you've got a stopwatch so that they were animated paths then once you have animated and created the mask and you copy it across to another layer it will maintain and retain all the animation that you've put on it any changes that you've made will be moved across so that's how you can create multiple masks on one layer and you can copy and paste those masks to multiple other layers to get whatever result you're actually looking for. Well I hope you found this tutorial useful when it comes to how to draw a mask and how to use a mask and how to copy a mask from one layer to another and if it has helped your workflow why not let me know. My name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching.